Hey folks, Krusty Old Marine with you. I want to share with you today uh, the DIY induction brass annealer. I built this. Um, I didn't come up with plans. I got the idea and the plans from Northeast Texas Tactical off of YouTube. I uh, used some of the same parts. I used the same timer that he used. Um, that is a hundredth second timer, which I think you should go with a hundred second if you can find it. That's a really good timer. You absolutely need to do at least a tenth of a second timer uh, because <clears throat> your brass is so different. This brass is brand new SIG, and I'll show you how it's working out right now. Yes, I'm annealing brand new. When you get Lapua brass, it's uh, annealed from the factory, and I uniform the primer pockets and uniform the flash holes. Uh, that's a one time deal, but I you know, I size it, neck size it, uh, full length size it, trim, you know, the whole thing that I do when I'm reloading because I want everything as consistent as possible. So, uh, uh, one difference on this annealer, this is not the one that uh, he pointed out, the one he has was uh, made in China. This is a Taishi, it is Japanese. Is it better? I don't know. It's about the same price, maybe a little bit cheaper, but. Uh, I tend to think that the Japanese put out better products than the Chinese, and if I ever have a choice, I don't buy Chinese crap. So that's why I went with that one. Um, let me give you a close up on some of the items here, and then I'll go through annealing some brass and let you see how that works out. It's really cool. <laughs> this thing is this thing is awesome. I'm like happy as a pig and shit over it. So I didn't have a, a burger bullet box. I had a Lapua bullet box. It's a little deeper. That's how I built mine up. It's got the DROK, D-R-O-K, uh, delay relay module. I really like this thing because, like I said, you can go down to the tenth or the hundredth of seconds with this, and that makes a huge difference. Uh, I'm not using any kind of temperature paste or anything. I'm just going strictly by sight. So when my case just starts to turn orange or red, that's when I'm coming off with it. And I do some, I kind of, I do it by counting first, like I'll turn it on without the timer and count 1,001, 1,002 and doing it by sight and see, you know, so it's, it's running right around two seconds. Um, I've actually got it on 2.28 for this. No, I don't. I have it on 2.3. Uh, I think the fan that I have right here, I have it when I'm set up on the annealer. I have that fan blowing to help the, keep the annealer cool. But the way this is running, um, I'm doing 2.3 seconds on each case. And then it's got a 4.8 second interval. So <clears throat> I think your interval off should be twice as long as your interval on to help keep this thing cool. But with this uh, Lyman aluminum loading block that I'm using, I didn't want to use plastic because these things get hot and you can melt, melt the... Uh, loading block a little bit. So I got the aluminum one from uh, Lyman or aluminium for all you Brit types out there. Um, but I really like that and I, it, the way the spacing is, I've got a dozen cases on it and I think that gives enough off cycle time in between dumping these into the pan over here um, that this thing has not given me any problem yet on overheating. Um, I've got the I used a different 12 volt power supply. This one has an on off switch, which I don't know. It's kind of handy, kind of a pain in the ass sometimes too, but uh, whatever. I've got some other coils here that I built. These I built out of 12 gauge wire. And what I was finding is that four coils is, and that one, that one needs a little work. Uh, the spacing on it's not great, but uh, four coils was really taking too long to heat to suit me. So I added a fifth coil and get that to focus. So adding the fifth coil, it gives more current uh, through the induction process. And with a, uh, this is, this is the one I've got built for uh, 223 and it's running in the neighborhood of about 1.8 seconds. And like I said, that was number, uh, that was 12 gauge wire. This one is what I'm using on 6.5 and 308. Again, I, I discovered that five coils works best and this is 10 gauge wire. I thought 10 would be plenty and was the same size as what was included with the uh, annealer, but it's not. Uh, the annealer actually comes with 8 gauge, but 8 gauge is a whole lot harder to work with and bend. So the, the 10 seems to be working out great. And I didn't have any uh, 
Well, I had some eight, nine, and 10 millimeter deep well sockets that uh, Northeast Texas Tactical said makes good size, <clears throat> but on my eight and nine, they stepped down. Uh, so it's not a true size and there's not really a, a, you know, a good long area to wind a coil. So what I've done so far is I'm using this 7 16th drill bit for the 223 and I'm using this half inch drill bit for the 6.5. And you can see here when I put that over, that is a pretty good fit. It could stand to be just a little tighter. Uh, if I if I had it a little closer in, it would shorten my times. But, you know, running 2.3 seconds, that's plenty fast enough for me. And like I said, I think I could do it a little bit faster, but uh, got this fan running uh, to help keep the induction heater cool. So that may be affecting the temperatures on this too. But uh, let's turn the lights out. I can't get really dark here, but uh, I think I can get dark enough for you to see what, what this uh, looks like. And I'll go through a, a whole process of getting all 12 uh, done. And we'll take it from there. So you can probably hear the uh, heater cycling. I hope you can hear this over the fan noise. Uh, it's probably going to be a little aggravating. But uh, let's go in here and see what it looks like. So let's go here and uh, anneal these 12 and show you how it looks. So I'm holding the button down. That one looked like it might have been a touch cool. Pretty good. Just barely turned an orange red, red orange. That one got a little hotter. I hope I'm not uh, getting this out of the camera frame. Be careful. Touch these. I'm not. It's going to be real sorry. Like I said, if this coil was just a little bit tighter, I could probably cut that time down, but I don't know. I'm okay with 2.3 seconds, personally. I hope you're picking up the uh, color change on this brass. All right. So let's take a look at these and see how they turned out. They look nice and uniform to me. Uh, looks like a pretty good color. I don't think uh, there was one that got a little little warmer right there, but uh, overall, that's a lot better than I've uh, done with flame annealing. So, and I don't ever have to worry about the rubber wheel that I have on the annealies getting a little too hot and melting goo onto these cases. That is a real pain in the ass. Um, is it as good as an amp uh, perfect annealer? No, I'm sure it's not. And it's probably not nearly as accurate, but didn't cost me $1,600, $1,700 either. Uh, maybe someday when I'm rich, I will pay that for an annealer. But uh, right now, um, this is pretty quick and really damn consistent. I'm, uh, like I said, I'm really happy with it. You know, happy as a pig in, you know, you know what. So anyway, I hope you liked that little intro and demonstration into how the uh, DIY induction brass annealer is working. I'm, I'm loving it so far. Um, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and uh, share us, comment, uh, comment on what you think about this DIY uh, induction brass annealer. Uh, if you've built one yourself or uh, uh, if you've built a different kind, uh, I really like the idea of induction annealing. Anyway. Till next time, remember kids, X's win matches, and keep the greasy side down. Y'all have a good one.